I want to ask you if, if it's permissible how you financed your education. I came here. Uh, my grandparents were, we were technically poor. I say we were poor. I ended up, the answer, the short answer to that is uh, college loans. Mm -hmm. Up until I was pretty much a senior in college. Uh, and I have a, an older fraternity brother. And so this is where it comes back, where I learned from everybody. Mm -hmm. I was the corresponding secretary. And so that meant for the fraternity my first year. And so that means I went to the, went to the uh, post office there on campus. I got the mail and I distributed mail to everybody. Mm -hmm. I had this brother who was in grad school, working on his master's. He got, a, got two, two master's degrees from here. And so he'd get these, this, these, this mail all the time. And so I'd find him. I said, here's your mail. And he'd look at him and say, ah, just throw them away. I said, what is it? He said, the Beatles. I said, don't you want them? He said, they knew I was a college student when they gave me that credit card. They should have never given it to me. And I thought, well, you do ultimately have to pay it. He said, yeah, somewhere down the line, I'm going to have to pay the cost. He said, but here's the deal. Let me give you a word of advice. He said, how are you paying for your college? I said, college loans. He said, yeah, like a lot of us. He said, if you at all, stop it. He said, because when you graduate, what people don't really, what does not register because they're teenagers, you got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. So if there's a way for you to finance your college without getting loans, stop. Mm -hmm. And I heard him loud and clear. Mm. And I stopped. You did? Yep. And how did you do it? I just worked. I did. I robbed from Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> and so from that point on, I did get loans. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Scholarships were probably available, but I didn't inquire. Yeah. And I got the loans. Uh, I'm one of those fortunate ones when I got it, I paid it back, mm -hmm. got it done. Mm -hmm. But that's how I finance coming to school. Yeah. And the other piece about I thought I thought we were poor growing up, and you know, because by that time my grandparents were they were retired. They received Social Security. I received Social Security because you know from my mother. Uh, and that was pretty much the source of our income. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to college thinking, man, I'm not destitute because I don't know what that means. I never went to bed hungry. I, our phone was never cut off. Our utilities were always in place. I had a normal upbringing, and mm -hmm. that's why I admired my grandparents because as I got older, I, tried, I, I, I recognized they're much smarter than I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then for me, I started working, and that's how I, that's how I know the day of Mal, of I'm sorry, Martin Martin Luther King's uh, funeral it was April third, nineteen sixty eight, because I started work April third, nineteen sixty eight, at a Kroger store. I wanted to work because I I knew my grandparents struggled, uh, and I, I got a job. And the reason I can remember it's April 3rd because it was exactly one month from the day I, from my birthday, I lied on the application. Mm -hmm. And I said I was 16. And the day I started to work, that's why I say, I am here today because of the kindness of other people. The manager of the store, who was Ango, his name was Pat Abair. I went to, I couldn't tell a lie. And so I went to him, I said, Mr. Abair, I have a situation I need to share with you that will probably jeopardize my job, but you're gonna find out sooner or later. I'm not 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm not 16 for 30 days. And I am so sorry. I really need this job, but if you find it that I, it's not that, you know, since I've lied on the application, if I don't get the job, then mm -hmm. I just have to lose this job but I can't lie to you because you're going to find out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He hired me. <laughs> okay, he said once a month. You probably yeah. weren't the first one. To yeah. <laughs> yeah, and see, that again confirmed to me that... You might like, have been the first one to admit that you were <laughs> lied. Yeah, but, but that experience con confirmed to me, and I'll be blunt about this, that all white people weren't bad. 
Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. See, and I, that had already been affirmed to me throughout my life because, again, I came to this college because of a guy who was my mentor who didn't even know he was my mentor mm -hmm. who was my basketball coach. Yeah. He's white. Yeah. You'd have to be to have gone to school yeah. here. But yeah. <laughs> and so for me, it wasn't the color of your skin. It was your heart. Mm -hmm. If your heart was right and you treated me kindly and I felt that, then it didn't matter to me. So how did the news come to you? You were at work when the news came to you? Actually, I was, were we in school? It happened, you know what, we weren't in school. It happened late. We were already at home. I was already out of school, and it flashed on the news. Phone rang, and it was just, yeah, it was horrible. It's as if someone had killed a member of our family. Because this guy was carrying the banner not only for African Americans, he was carrying the banner for justice. He wanted equality for everybody. Women, children, families. And the thing about that whole struggle that I was acutely aware of is that when Martin Luther King marched, everywhere he marched, if you looked in that crowd, it was not at all black crowd. And people like me saw that. There are, how do we put it, there are good white Americans. Huh. Well, speaking of, um, we, uh, uh, I understand that JFK had quite a presence in the black community. Do yeah, you remember that him? was just as devastating. Actually, it happened earlier, happened in 1963. I was in elementary school. Uh, now, remember I told you I grew up near the airport. His plane landed at Lowfield Airport. We were aware of the time that the plane was to land, and I wasn't one of them, but there were, they allowed some of the kids, my elementary school, it was three stories, they allowed some of the kids to get on the roof and watch the plane when it landed. My grandparents saw, uh, they went, because his motorcade came from the airport up, down Mockingbird Lane, because we lived near Mockingbird, Lemon and Mockingbird, they went down, and like all the other people, they got a chance to see him, you know, just hours before he was assassinated. So, um, he was endured by, endeared by the, the African American community just because um, he was just as different as, as us. He was the first Catholic president, he was the youngest president, so he didn't fit the mold. And, um... So, he was, to my knowledge, he's the first president that I really had a lot of knowledge of because prior to him was Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. um, he was the president that was going to help America change. Um, was his picture on your wall? Did we have one of those pictures? <laughs> I'm trying to think after the fact. Did we have, you know what? We did, after the fact. It's, yeah. Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, John Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And Jesus. Yeah. And what we, what we reaction Jesus on the wall, did you know? your parents have to the civil rights movement and uh, uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and you know all of the figures of the yeah. of the movement? My grandparents probably lean more toward Martin Luther King mm -hmm. because that was their.